It's already fr Friday. Yeah, a lot of work. Everybody's tired, yes? Most of you are tired, yeah. It's normal. In the, at the end of the, the school, there's always, uh, you have the possibility to, to uh, give your opinion of what could be improved, what works, and so on. And I always get some people saying, oh, but the only thing is that we are so tired at, on Sunday. Okay. But I, I don't care, actually, because... <laughs> No, I mean, uh, how could you have uh, less activities? It mean what? Okay, so if if we don't go until Sunday, then obviously there will be no time for the the projects and so on. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you see, when when you when would you work on your on your on your projects. Uh, the school is based on the projects. And still, most of the groups don't have their, their work done on Friday. If you still go on for an afternoon uh, lecture, this becomes the traditional schools where you sit and uh, watch people. It's kind of live YouTube. <laughs> so, well, very good. So the, the subject today is about the importance of space in ecology. But, well, it is just an introduction to spatial ecology. Well, better, spatial population dynamics. Um, so, uh, up to this uh, moment, we have never considered systems where space was important, in the sense that we did not look to the spatial aspects of the systems we are we discuss. However, it is a quite legitimate uh, question that we can uh, uh, pose. It's like, okay, uh, I know that the population has a certain size, okay, but I want to know how the population is distributed over space. Right? And uh, from the point of view of uh, population ecology, space can be non-homogeneous in the sense that it's not, I'm obviously not ta uh, talking about the space as considered in, in physics, where, which is uh, homogeneous here. Uh, but the use of space for a certain population can be different from one place to the other. Okay, so, obviously, if you have a region which is a good habitat for a species, then you will have a different dynamics and a space in a, uh, then different dynamics in a space where you have good habitat will be different from where you have uh, bad conditions. So, space can be heterogeneous in, in this context. Okay? Studying uh, heterogeneous habitats and so on, well, this, this is beyond the, the scope of this uh, course, which should take us to more mathematically difficult problems. Yeah? So what we will do today is to introduce the basic formulation of how to <coughs> describe the dynamics of populations which can uh, extend in space and also change in time. So the first thing that we will need is to change our basic variable. So our basic variable has been, up to now, always the, the total number of individuals at a certain region. But now we would like to talk about the number of individuals in a certain place at a certain time. But actually what we want is not the number of individuals, we want the density of the individuals at a certain point of space and time. So we, I will use the, the Greek letter rho. 
to denote the density, the number of individuals per unit space, per, or unit area, or whatever, depends on the dimension of your space. And we'll use this, this thing. And this will be a function, not only of time, because densities can change in time, but also of the location in space, which will be den denoted by a vector x. That's the location in space. So, the, say, the density of, of uh, humans in this room uh, depends on space, like over there. The density is zero, the density is higher here. So that, that's what means that the density depends on the location, okay? The location is, is, is a, a vector. We won't do lots, lots of things with um, many dimensions, okay? We will usually write things in one dimension only. But in general, depends on the, on the location and can also have some time variation. So, this is a function of more than one variable. Until, un before this lecture, we had always variables that depended only uh, on the time. Okay? Therefore, we used all the time ordinary derivatives. Okay? Now, things have to change, because what is the derivative of rho? Okay, you say, but derivative in time or in space? Okay, which one? <laughs> okay, so you can do both of them. So if you, if you have not seen partial derivatives, that means just that you have a function of time and, and space. Let's, let's uh, simplify things, like say rho is time and I, I take the uh, one-dimensional space on a line. Okay, it's easier to. Then I can calculate the derivative with respect to time, which is take you take the function. You consider the x is not depending on time; it's a constant from the point of view of time. You take the derivative with respect to time, or vice versa. You can take the derivative with respect to uh, the position. Okay. So we have now two possibilities. Okay, good. So, so we will have to deal with partial derivatives. Okay? Therefore, our equations will not be any more ordinary differential equations. They will be partial differential equations. And actually, we will have nonlinear partial differential equations at a certain point. And okay, then you. Mm, red light. So up, up, up. What's what's happening here? Okay, the or nonlinear uh, partial differential equations are, are are difficult usually. Okay, but we won't go into really solving them. We will just extract collective behavior as we have done before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so that's <coughs> that's the sorry. That's the <coughs> That's, that will be our mathematical arena, okay? functions that depend on at least two variables and partial differential equations and partial derivatives and so on. So, but now we want to construct a basic theory about the spatial distribution of a population in uh, in a given in a given place. Okay? So we can only do this if we make some assumptions of how the population or in the individuals move. Okay? Well, oh, okay, this is not very good actually, but uh, okay, because you have uh, yeah. We are not talking about movement ecology here. Movement ecology is how, how individuals move. We are looking at populations, actually. So populations can redistribute themselves in space, even if the individuals do not move. You can have, for instance, the spatial dynamics 
of population of plants, okay, of trees. The trees don't move, okay, but on a longer time scale, they actually there's an actual uh, spatial dynamics with the fact that new trees are born and not at the same location. So this goes on redistributing the population somehow. Okay, so. Spatial ecology is not only concerned, obviously, with individuals that have movement, that go around. You have also populations that, that uh, redistribute in space. So <coughs> this term redistributing uh, in the population redistributes in space, it's, it's a little bit more more uh, correct when we talk about spatial ecology from the point of view of populations. Eh? Populations redistribute. Anyhow, <coughs> we, will, we will assume that the underlying dynamics at the individual level is composed of random events, random movements. The basic, basic uh, underlying uh, dynamics is random. So that's you. You could object to this. I mean, there is there are things like directed movement also. Okay, I mean not uh, not you could say if I go out there <coughs> and I don't see so much randomness. Okay. Well, this has to do with scales of uh, which scale are we looking at the at the everyday movement or on the larger scale and so on. But let's try to do the thing simplest way. Simplest way is to to assume that uh, populations have a random uh, uh, move to random events. And this is <coughs> analogous to m molecules in a gas. Okay? So, and we know from uh, from physics that now, if you look at the population at a spatial scale, much larger than the scale of the individuals moving. So I'm. I'm I'm really zooming uh, out, looking at a larger uh, larger scale, and and uh, therefore there are lots of individuals, right? And I look this from far, okay? So I'm not trying to describe every individual's movement in the in the uh, in this case. I'm trying just to look from far and see how the big picture. Is and then we know from physics that for a gas with molecules or atoms or whatever which do not interact strongly, blah blah blah, uh, what you see is is a kind of of a phenomenon which is called the diffusion. And diffusion for gases obeys something which is called the thick. Law, fixed law. And we will use, and we'll assume the same uh, here for our population. Okay, so good. So what is the fixed law? So the the Fickian diffusion law. It's a law that concerns uh, the 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 following. The flux of material, okay? Thick law is, is usually concerned with inorganic things, yeah, I mean molecules and so on. Uh, but we will apply it for our case. So the flux of individuals, by animal cells or whatever, is proportional to the gradient of the density of the 
of this material. So our basic variable is the density of individuals. And we are saying that the flux, which is also a vector, okay, direction the flux can go this way or that way. In a moment, I will simplify things and put everything on one dimension, so don't you don't have to deal with all the vectorial notations, okay? But uh, let's start more general. It's proportional, therefore there's a proportionality constant, and I will put a minus sign also, and say this is proportional to the gradient, which is usually denoted by this, and this, this beast here is just uh, this vector. If we take it for two dimensions, we can uh, more dimensions, x and so on. Okay, that's the gradient. So um, that's the basic law. We have a constant. Okay. Well, actually, uh, this this could be also dependent on the space location d. In principle, it could be. Okay, but it's a parameter given. Okay, the diffusion, it's called diffusion constant because it appears in diffusion. Okay, but actually the diffusion constant could be a function. A function. There's no, nothing that, that uh, prohibits that to be a function. Okay, we will do the things with the constant diffusion, but just to remind you that it could be a, a function. Okay, uh, which means that we, we could have different diffusions in different parts of, the, of, of space. Very good. So, hmm? the D, constant, it's D, but it's the only constant here, okay? This is the, it's the D, this is the notation for gradient, okay? Which is just take the derivatives of rho with x and form a vector with the derivative uh, in, in uh, 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 d rho d dy. Okay? So, okay. Now, as you want to make things simple, and actually we can do a lot of things uh, with simplifications, and will be true for more complex situations, I will take the space to be only a line, okay? So in instead of having space two-dimensional or three-dimensional, I consider the space to be only on the line. I'm doing, it. can I always do this? No, you cannot always. You want more real realism, you take usually two-dimensional space. Three-dimensional space in ecology and population biology is not very common, okay? Because most, I mean, if you take, talk animals or plants, I mean, they, they are two-dimensional in space, usually. If you say, oh, it could be a bird, yeah, but, I mean, they don't really explore a very large extent of the atmosphere, okay? So, so a bird can, can fly, say, 10 kilometers uh, he, uh, around, but the, the height he explores will not be more than some 100 meters or 200 meters. So, it's actually two-dimensional, everything. But, well, anticipating, I will take here the one-dimensional case because the results that I obtain with the one-dimensional case translate very, very easily to the two-dimensional case, and so I don't have to do more involved calculation. Therefore, in one dimension, this is easy. This means just that the flux, which is now not anymore a vector, it's just a number, it will be something like minus d, d rho, dx, which is very nice, okay? I just have to take the derivative a bit. So this simplifies the problem. I don't have to go for vectorial calculus and so on. And now, well, this is the Fikian law of diffusion, okay? It's formulated directly about the population. We are not making, we are not describing individuals. We could do this, 
by use by the use of something which is called master equations and probability of movement at, at a more uh, uh, individual level. This can be done. And if I have time, I can comment this at the end. Let's see. Probably I won't have time. <laughs> so, very nice. Now, that's not enough. The diffusion law here in words says that, uh, say I have a concentration, okay? Profile. Okay, in, in space. Here's rho. Here's x. Okay. This says that the tendency to move, that the, the, the flux of will be always uh, such that it is proportional to the derivative of this function. In, in practice, this will say, tell you, that will tell you that uh, uh, diffusion is typically something that you have concentrations which smooth out. That's diffusion, okay? You have the tendency to smooth out, which means that you go to steady, when, if you want to go to a steady state, something when n nothing changes, no fluxes, means that the population is constant everywhere. The population is constant everywhere. There's no fluxes. That's that's a, a steady state. Okay. Yeah. So the tendency is is, is to spread out. No, no. For the time, ah, okay. For the time being, we are only assuming movement. I will develop m movement part, and then I will add growth. Okay. So, for instance, here, if you look at that, take a point here, okay? The derivative here is negative, okay? From here to here, increasing x decreases rho. Therefore, the derivative is negative, okay? Therefore, the flux is positive, because the minus sign here, meaning that the tendency is to go this way. And here, the, the derivative is positive, the flux is negative, tendency is to go this way, okay? That's it, that's diffusion, okay? Now, the flux is this guy, rho dx. Yeah, but, but this, is not a this is the definition. Ah, no, 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 okay, I, 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 will, I will show you how to use the flux, then. Okay. okay. I'm trying to avoid because you have to put an area and a vector and so on, and okay, and just, just using heuristically. So, in, 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 in one dimension, actually, that will be like the number of individuals that 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 goes out or in of a region, okay, in in, in the variation in time. Okay. So, but this is the fixed law is not enough. We need something more, and we will use that. The diffusion process does not create individuals. The number of individuals is constant. There is no death or birth process associated to the movement. Okay? Later on, we will have diffusion plus growth and saturation and whatever. But the idea is always that these are separate processes. We are separating movement or redistribution of the population in space from the birth, death, and vital dynamics, okay? The, the true population dynamics is separated from the, 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 uh, the spatial uh, rearrangement of the population, okay? Just moving does not create individuals, okay? That's the idea. 
So I will consider therefore that the population should be constant, which mean, will impose the following idea. The rate of change on time of the quantity of individuals in a given region of space is equal to the flux through the borders. So if I give you a certain limited region of space here, the, the number of individuals here can only vary through immigration or in, in, in or out through the borders. Okay? There's nothing here that creates individuals, bears or, 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 or kills individuals, just through the movement. So the only variation possible is comes from uh, from flux on the on the borders. So the to total number of individuals in a given region of size. Uh, so we are considering, say, a one-dimensional region. Here's x. I con consider two points here, x zero and x one, and I, this is my region. And I'm saying that. The only way I have variation of the number of individuals here is through fluxes through the borders. Okay? So, the total number of individuals here is just the integral of rho, okay? From x0 to x1. So, the time variation of this thing is equal to the differences of fluxes. The flux at here minus the flux at here. So the balance of fluxes is the only process that changes the number of individuals in this situation. And that's the law of mass, or in this case, number of individuals conservation. So now, those of you that are not mathematicians nor physicists or have not been trained in a little bit more, uh, maybe you won't understand the next uh, step of calculation. Never mind. You can catch up just after that. Okay. So because now I need to use this and together with the Fick law to obtain an equation for rho. But at the end we want something, a differential equation for this guy, which is our basic, basic uh, uh, description of the situation of the of the system, given the density of individuals. So we need an equation for the density of the individuals. We don't have any equation here. That's just saying about the flux. And but I have this equation which has an integral and so on. Yeah, messy thing. Okay, but okay. So I I can do something which is now take this region to be very small. Okay, this is very small region here. Okay, and. Uh, what I will do is a, is a, well, it's a Taylor expansion of functions and so on. If you don't know what this is, okay, just uh, accept it. Take it as a truth coming from somewhere. <laughs> so, that's my equation. I will take x1 to be x0 plus some small increment delta x and take delta x going to zero which allows me to transform the integral into this product, which is very, very better than having an integral. We have just, uh, just uh, is this working? Yeah. Well, I never see this. Oh, here. Rho times delta x here, we have this product. And the flux can be written in this way, which is, the flux at x1 is the flux at x0 plus the delta x time, times the derivative of, of, of the flux at this point. Okay, This is a Taylor expansion and first order term only. If you don't know what it is, okay, just, uh, just relax. Okay? Uh, which implies, therefore, that uh, from the uh, equation here, that d rho dt times delta x is minus delta x d uh, derivative of flux here, which is nice because we know this guy here from the from the Fick law is related to the derivative of rho. Therefore, I substitute the flux 
from the Fick's law, and I obtain this equation, which is an equation for rho, which is, at the end of the day, g rho the t proportional to the second derivative of rho with respect to x. So, okay. Okay, so people that didn't follow this, now you can, okay, wake up. Okay, wake up. We have already the equation. If you don't, if you didn't follow the derivation of the equation, okay, accept the equation, okay. Uh, which is, the time variation of my density is proportional to the second derivative of the density with respect to space, okay. Uh, you know, everybody knows what the second derivative is. It's just take the function and take a derivative, which is a no new function, and you take again the derivative. That's the second derivative. Okay. Um, so this is the diffusion equation. If I had taken into account that the space is not one-dimensional but say two-dimensional. I would have obtained this equation here with this Laplacian, okay? And the Laplacian is just this uh, expression which is written there. We won't use this now, okay? We don't want to have two-dimensional things, but I'm just saying, telling you that if you, if you use a two-dimensional setting with vectors and so on, you end up with this equation, okay? So this is the uh, diffusion equation. And this is well, well known in, uh, in physics and uh, from the 19th century, I think, which is uh, the same equation that describes, for instance, the distribution of temperature in a, in a, in a solid or this, uh, describes the concentration, the dynamics of concentration of a, of a, of, 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 of a, say, a, of, a, of a gas or a liquid or something like that, okay? So, there's some basic facts about this equation, which is, it is a partial differential equation, has derivatives with respect to x and t, and it's linear. And, you know, when you have equations which are linear, you are happy because you can solve this. You can actually solve linear equations. The, the difficult part is when you don't, when you have nonlinear equations, okay? and can be solved therefore analytically. So let me just make a comment, which is a little bit more, just to to make things clear what about what is what is to solve an equation, okay? Because this is uh, sometimes a not well defined word, okay? There are some different senses between physicists and mathematicians and biologists who use the idea of solving an equation, okay? Well, strictly speaking, what is if to solve an equation mathematically is the following. There's no, uh, and just look at the equation and say, I want to solve it. It's not a well-defined thing. Because you have to say, I want to solve it, but in order to, to make sense of this, you have to say what kind of problem you want to solve. Do you want to solve an initial value problem because you have to give the distribution at a, at a time zero. But you can also solve something else, which is a, a boundary value problem, saying I fix the values of rho at certain points of space, and then I want the solution, okay? So I have to define what, what kind of problem I want to uh, solve. Usually, this is be done, so the supplementary conditions. Uh, usually what we give for this equation is the initial condition and the values of either rho or the derivative at the borders of the region or at infinity. And solving it analytically means that I can find an expression for rho given rho at time equal to zero. And an expression, and this expression will be general for any any constants. In, in this case, it's just d, the constant, okay? So, 
that this is means that is to solve. Okay? This is different from something people in physics do not uh, do not think about this. It's different, but just finding one solution. Finding one solution, maybe I can find a solution for a very precise initial condition, but not any initial condition. So mathematically, what you want when you say solve analytically is given any initial condition, at a, or at least a class of initial conditions, say initial conditions that go to zero at infinity, for instance, that's the usual thing, I can find the solution at time t for any initial condition and any parameters. This is different from saying, OK, I have one solution, which corresponds to one precise initial condition. This is different. Okay. So that's what it means so this nonlinear uh, this linear equation we can actually solve. Okay? So we don't want to see the solution in full generality because it's it's a monster. But uh, so we we will actually work with one uh, given solution that's just the uh, distinctive solution, which is called the um, the Gaussian function. The Gaussian function, which is this, uh, this in one dimension for positive time and x between minus infinity and plus infinity, this function is a solution to the diffusion equation. How do I know it? Well, or how could I convince you that it is actually a, 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 a solution? You take the expression, you substitute in an equation, you calculate, 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 and you see that the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side in this case. Okay? That's the way, just by, okay, uh, here's the solution, verify it. Okay? Q is a, a, a constant related to the initial condition. So, what is this function lo looking like? Okay, how does it depend on x? On x, the profile in space is just a, a Gaussian, as it should be. It's just something, in this case it's centered here, it's just something which has this, this is a Gaussian, because you know, it's minus x squared divided by something and so on. Okay? So it has a certain amplitude, which is related to key, q, and it has a certain width. So the width is, is, four, uh, is the square root of 4 dt. Therefore, the width is variable in time. So if I have this at a certain moment of time, I ha will have a wider distribution in the next moment. But the amplitude is also decreasing with t. You see, there is a fraction q over 2 times uh, square root of pi dt. So this means that as t increases, this, this number decreases. And therefore, you have two processes in time. You have a, always a Gaussian, but it, it it's opening up and decreasing. Therefore, the next moment of time will have a smaller row, but but a wider distribution. I'm very bad with the with the drawing, and therefore I will I have a figure for you. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you have a time at the initial time t1. T2 and T3, you see, it, it's, it's going down and, and, uh, and widening. So that's what diffusion is in general. Okay? So this is, this is a particular solution, but it's, it's a good one. Okay? It's uh, something which illustrates very well what you have in the situation. So we have a solution, then you would say, OK, Let's try to put some meaning, more, more biological meaning, into this. Okay, so uh, okay, this is just this in two dimensions. It's like this. Okay, you have a concentrated pulse. It widens. 
in both x and d, uh, in uh, x and y, and and decreases the amplitude. Eh? So that's the kind of thing that really sh it's smoothing out. Okay, tendency to smooth the solution. So uh, in order to put some bio biology, let us ask a, a, a definite question about that. So the, the question that we want to uh, so to ask here is. Uh, suppose that at time zero, you have a population of a certain number of individuals, which is released at a point which I will say x equal to zero. So I have a region where the population is absent, and, and I introduce a certain number of individuals at a certain point. And I want to know what happens. But more precisely, what I want to know is where will I find how, how will be the range of the population in a future, future time? Okay? We know it will expand, but I want to know where can I find the population. If I'm very far apart, I say, okay, I haven't seen anything here. Okay? So there will be somehow a, a region where I find the population and a region where I don't find the population. Okay? So that's, that's a little bit tricky from the mathematical point of view sometimes. Why? Because this Gaussian solution, it's, it's something, there's something which is not so nice about the Gaussian solution is that I introduce it at a time t equal to zero, concentrated at a point, and immediately at, at, at any next uh, time, it's a non zero solution everywhere. Okay, a Gaussian is non zero. In any point of the of the of the line, okay. So this you would say, oh, the population ex range expanded from zero to infinity in in a in a moment. Yeah. Oh, this is not nice. Yes, that's not good. Infinite pop. I mean, population. I introduced this population here and. Uh, five miles there, in, in uh, one second, the population is non-zero there. Problem, problem, yeah? You see, that it's not going good. And then you say, okay, but, yeah, you know, it actually decays exponentially, okay? It's decaying exponentially, it decays very quickly, which is better. Then you can say, okay, actually, I want to give a new interpretation for this guy here, Rho, okay? Rho will be associated to the probability of finding the population at a certain point of, time, uh, of space, which means that, well, this probability is, is very, very small. Uh, if I have released the population there, this probability in the next, say, in the next uh, uh, point of time, uh, next instant, is, will, will decay exponentially, so therefore that the probability of finding some, somebody five miles from here is actually 10 to minus, blah, blah, blah. Very small number means that there is no individual, actually. Okay, good. This is a way around, okay? It's a way around, yeah. You can fix all of this with more, more subtle mathematics using uh, something which is called redistribution kernels, but we don't go into redistribution kernels, yeah. So, but the one way to circumvent this problem is to say, I want to know what's the region occupied by, say, arbitrarily, 95% um, of the population. So I, I look here and say, I want to know where I find 95% of the population. Okay? So I can do this. Why? Yeah. You see, I say, I, I want to know my population is on a line. I say, yes, this is zero. And I have a, a region of extent two times L. And uh, I want to know uh, the, the L such that the population that is contained here is 95% of the population. Okay, five percent is outside. So I will say then I ha I'm introducing in a in a little bit tricky way. I would say the range of the population is defined by that. 
could I use 99%? Yeah, obviously, that's it's just uh, one change, uh, many, many things. So I say, okay, but the population is given by the integral of rho. And rho is, if I release it at, a, at all the population at point zero, at time zero, then rho is just given by the Gaussian function. And I know how to integrate Gaussian functions between, say, an, uh, L and, uh, minus L and L. So I know how to integrate this, OK? Uh, don't, uh, don't despair. I won't do this analytically here and so on. But it's possible to do this, OK? It's a piece of calculation of integrals. OK, you calculate this. And what turns out is that 95% of the population is contained in the region of size 2 times square root of 2 times d times t. But what I want you to, to, to remember about that is that this is a population that is growing in time. As time goes on, the range of the population grows. Okay? With, it grows proportional to the square root of time. Okay? So, but this means also that I want, if I want now to know the speed at which the region is growing, so I want to know the speed of the region, the speed is the derivative in time of the size. And the derivative of time of something which is proportional to square root of t means that the speed will be proportional to 1 over the square root of, of t, because the derivative of square root of t is proportional to 1 over the square root of t. So as time go, goes, goes on, the speed decreases. This means that it's like this. OK? That's, that's the range. So the result of this is the speed decreases with time. Very good. So we will challenge this. But let's take a next step in our procedure. So the prediction here is that if the only processes occurring at this population is, is diffusion, then if I release a population and it spreads, then the speed of the, of the, re, uh, of the, of the borders where the population is expanding, the speed of this border is uh, decreasing uh, in time, decreasing speed. So now we want to give a further step and introduce the real the population dynamics of the system. Not only diffusion, we want to take vital dynamics into account. A population can, can change in time also due to birth and death and all the things that you have seen in the previous uh, uh, lectures. And uh, so I want to take both processes into account. Okay, this is what well, now the time. I mean, you can look at it if you look for the from the equation. The time is it's arbitrary. Okay, but you could say okay. Uh, uh, so you can make approximations. Like I, I will say that uh, the population is already homogeneous uh -huh. after a certain time. If the, say that the, the the variation of rho is smaller than ten to minus five, say ten to minus four, and so, so this is. Let's say, okay, how long does it take 
to have this homogeneous that you can calculate this. I mean, I, I've never calculated, but it's prob you have the solution, you can do this. Yeah. So, okay. Let, let's come back to um, the idea of, um, that we want to have also growth. When is this relevant? This is relevant, not always. But it's relevant if the time scale of population change due to diffusion and due to growth are the same. The diffusion processes, they have a typical time, okay? And the growth rate also has a typical time involved, okay? So how long does it take to, to have a... Di if diffusion is very slow, say, Okay, you have it concentrated here, and uh, it may take, uh, in order to have a, a broader thing here, it may be take uh, two years, okay? If it takes two years, it means that the population, and the, the dynamics of the movement is on the scale of years, okay? If you look at the scale of, of seconds, you don't see anything. If you look at the scale of centuries, you just, uh, everything has been diffused. So there is a typical scale, okay, for to see changes in the in the population due to diffusion. But there is also a scale related to uh, to the fact that you can see changes of the population due to growth or, or yeah growth and saturation, essentially growth. So if these processes happen on the same scale, growth also has the same. Yeah, you know, if you say the human population on Earth increases on a, on a, on a scale of uh, tens of 10 or 20 years, means that if you look at very short uh, time scales, you don't see any change. Okay, so there are time, time scales connected to the changes through diffusion and through growth. And if they are compatible, I will have to take into account both processes. So if I don't take into account both processes, I mean both diffusion and growth, I have to get an equation which has both of them. And as I told you, I want this to be separate processes. Movement or redistribution of space should not create new individuals. That, that was the basis of our derivation of the, of the diffusion equation. So I would just take this and add a new process, which is the growth process. But well, just adding the growth process, which is a Malthusian growth term, will give me infinite population. Okay, will give me always increasing population. So I have better to take a saturation process. So saying taking the logistic equation, which is here just rewritten a different way, I take a negative term like minus b times rho squared, which is always negative. This is there only in order not to have infinite populations. So uh, this is the equation, which is a famous equation. It's the fischer kolmogorov equation. And uh, so this, this is uh, the simplest equation, which has diffusion, growth, and self-regulation, meaning saturation. Of a, of a single species, okay? But this equation is nonlinear because it has a row squared. Um, so it's the representative of the class of reaction diffusion equation, okay? You, to, you say that this non, this dif, you have a diffusion term and the other terms are called reaction terms. This comes from chemistry. And uh, if you have more species, and then you have a system of partial differential equations which have diffusion terms for the movement of the species and you have reaction terms for the population dynamic uh, strict to sensor. So, and, and also the two-dimensional equation is, uh, is rather obvious. It's just taken the Laplacian instead of the second derivative of rho. So, the point is that this, uh, this equation uh, 
it's not solvable in the sense of the solving the initial value problem. There are some known solutions, but you know, if you have a nonlinear differential equation and you know one solution, doesn't mean that if you take uh, initial condition, that this this initial condition will develop over time to be close to the known solution. There's no reason. Okay, so just having one special solution is not not uh, enough. And actually, I don't. I won't even write down the solution because it's it's a solution that's not relevant to the case. But, well, you can always do numerical integration and so on and get the solution as a as a, a plot. Okay. So again, let us look for the same problem that we have. Uh, looked uh, before, which is the expansion of range where you can find a population. So the Fischer-Kolmogorov equation has, it can, be, it can be studied numerically. Uh, if I have the population concentrated here, it will expand also. That's the, the result from the numerical integration. But instead of having a decreasing amplitude, it has an increasing amplitude which saturates over time. So it expands, it increases, but it has a maximum amplitude, and then it goes on expanding this way. But the point is, now I will have things like, like the ones that are drawn there, so like uh, profiles, which are like that, which move in this direction. So I can now look at the problem of what's the speed of this point here, okay? Which will be considered the invasion speed. But this is mimics an invasion, yeah? uh, biological invasion. So. That's the, the, the expanding, the, the speed of the expansion of the population. So I can look at this, and well, these uh, people, like uh, mainly Kolmogorov, actually showed that this speed is constant. It's constant. And the speed is proportional to 2 times square root of A times D. Okay. You can do the usual uh, dimensional analysis and see that actually what's written on the right hand side here has dimensions of space over time. Okay? I'm just mentioning it. So the results from the Fischer Kolmogorov of equations is that the speed uh, of the expansion is constant. So we have two different results. Pure diffusion gives you situations where the population expands on uh, uh, with decreasing speed. The, the range when you find the population is decreasing while for the fischer kolmogorov equation has been shown that this, in, this, this front here travels with, speed, uh, with a constant speed. Result due to Kolmogorov in the 30s, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What? I don't, uh. I don't know. I have uh, another profile for the initial condition. Oh, okay. Th this will not. Well, analytically, probably, I mean, if you have an initial profile which is not uh, concentrated at that point, you mean? You have another different initial condition. Uh, usually, well, it, if, if the, 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 the equation is linear, can be solved analytically, there's an expression for the, for the thing. You can do this. But um, you will, depending on the profile, will get integrals that you have to do numerically. Okay. But uh, can be done. 
But uh, for the fischer komogorov equation, I mean, not even the simplest case has a solution, analytical. So, so everything is numerical. Uh, it's not only that everything is numerical. It, it's been proven mathematically that this, this speed is, uh, is constant. So this is a tricky. This is a tricky question. Okay, you're, you're taking me into a domain which is more mathematical. I can give you the answer about the fischer kolmogorov the equation. That is the following. I'm I'm saying that this is. A, I'm showing you this, but then you would say, okay, now I give you given initial condition. What's the what's the solution of the certain time t? Well, what uh, the, the story goes like, after a long enough time, we will actually be close to something like that. Then you would ask me, for any initial condition I get this, okay? Well, if you wait a long enough time, there is a class of initial conditions that all of them give you the same speed. And this class can be defined Essentially, at the initial conditions that are either in mathematical language of compact support, which means that they are they are zero after some after some points, or decays exponentially um, uh, at infinity. If they decay polynomially in infinity, the initial conditions, then that's not true anymore. And uh, so, for a very large class of initial conditions, you get the same speed, the one that I wrote there, okay? For a very large, and this is important, because this means that it's not only one initial condition that gives you the, uh, the speed, okay? Uh, which is written there, speed. It's not only for one sol initial solution, it's for a whole class of very general initial solutions. And actually, biological relevant initial uh, conditions will be of compact support. It will be zero after some, uh, some point. Okay? It's concentrated, it can't go for infinity. So it will be zero somewhere. It's concentrated in a given region, then zero. Therefore, it is this, the, all of these solutions give you, after some time, an invasion, an, a front traveling with a constant speed and the same speed. The speed does not depend on the initial condition. That's a very strong result, actually. Okay? And for the linear equation, it's the same, because actually, uh, for different initial conditions, will be, for large time, it's just a superposition of, 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 uh, of, of wave fronts, and uh, they, they travel with decreasing speed. So, but for this here, that's a very non-trivial mathematical result, that there's a very large class of initial conditions that gives you the same invasion speed. Okay, this is also due. The first, the first of this first result is due to Kolmogorov. Yeah. Actually, there is one. Okay, this is a mathematical excursion now. Okay, there is one explicit solution to the Fischer-Kolmogorov equation in one space dimension. It's called the Ablovitz-Petella solution. It's not difficult to see the solution. It does not have the speed uh, in if a and uh, d are say one, the speed is two. Okay. In uh, uh, which, but the Ablovitz Petel does not have an invasion speed of two. Okay, actually it's two point uh, one or two point two, but ma well, mathematically it's not two. Okay, and um, and this is due that the the a particular solution, which is known as this Ablovitz Petel uh, uh, solution, does not correspond to a localized initial condition. It's an infinity with the uh, slowly decaying tails. Uh, solution and therefore it is not uh, uh, one of the classes which gives you this uh, this thing. Okay? The problem is the misery of the model is as if you have capacity you know everywhere, right? No, it's the point is uh, no, no. The, well, the, the, there are intrinsic miseries here. Intrinsic because well, 
uh, first of all, just to make uh, when I say that uh, you will see this solution, that you have this solution, actually you have other solutions also, which are with different speeds, but all of them are unstable. And it is the only stable one that has this speed. So the miseries. Uh, well, there's one misery which we have kind of, of uh, imported from the diffusion equation, which is that this equation here has uh, has the, 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 the property that it's non-zero everywhere at any moment of time, okay? Even if I give it a time t equal to zero, which, which concentrated at a certain point, at the next moment, it is uh, non-zero everywhere, okay? But, well, we kind of found a way around by defi defining things and with the 95% story and so on, okay, was a little bit, not, not very elegant actually, yeah, mathematically, but well, it was a way around. And the same happens for the Fisher Komogorov because it has already the diffusion term, and diffusion in this simple diffusion always has this property of having non zero solution everywhere. Okay? It's, it's kind of a characteristic of this kind of diffusion. In order to not have non-zero, really, situations where the solution is non-zero, you have to go for other diffusion processes. I mean, you have to go to, not to this kind of diffusion, there are limited diffusion things, okay? And, uh, this could give you integral equation, so you better don't look at this now. <laughs> I don't know if you understand well, but in the last graph, uh -huh. the population, the number of the population is a great, but the population is fading. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, the number of, uh, the, there's always growth, okay? You see? That, uh, actually, but I mean, at a certain point, at a certain point, the population cannot grow anymore, say at the zero. But it's still expanding, but there is creation of individuals, okay? There, there is, yeah. If, if you look here, okay, you look here, if you look, just you, you put yourself here, you don't see creation anymore, okay? You don't see variation. But if you go here, you have this number of individuals, at the next uh, moment of time, this will have expanded, it will be larger. So you see increase of individuals here, okay? So there's still, the process of, of, uh, of expansion is due to diffusion plus creation of individuals, right? So, very good. Okay, let's now try to re reconnect this with some biological facts. I have two alternatives. Decrease in speed or constant speed? Hmm. I did. Well, we'll go to zero? I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I've never seen this calculation. I don't know. But I mean, it, it will just decrease to zero. It's not growing because it's. it's <laughs> You would, say, you would say, can I start with a big population and then make it decrease but expand, okay? I don't know, but probably yes, but I'm not sure. I'm, I've never seen this. My intuition says that it's true. So uh, before we go for the biological uh, facts that can support one, alternative or the other, just, me, just mention that the speed of invention does not depend on the nonlinear term in the fischer komogorov equation, okay? Take a look. There's a nonlinear term, it's, it's, it has a constant which is uh, in front of it, which is b, but the speed does not depend on b. Therefore, it's actually the same thing from the point of view of calculating the speed. I could have just disregarded the B, could just neglect it. And then I will have this equation, which is linear and can be solved. Okay? 
But this is only good for calculating the speed, not the profile. The profile depends on the linear term. But if you want to calculate only the speed, then it, that, that's enough. It's called the Scalum equation. So Scalum actually is a very important guy. And, uh, oh, oh. Hmm. and he came out with this uh, famous example, uh, which is the dynamics of the introduction of the muskrat in Europe. So the muskrat is is kind of big rat, and uh, which is native from uh, from Americas, right? and it was pretty much valued right? as a fur and other other things also. Pretty much valued, and people went to um, usually for United States or Canada, and it, no. Mostly United States, yeah, to hunt muskrats and then sell them in Europe for haute couture. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, then one of those entrepreneurs of the of the uh, of this time, uh, Santiago, had a good idea. Why do I have to send? Hunters every year to get my muskrats. Just get me some live muskrats here, and I will make a, a create, breed them here. And in, in this is actually in Prague happened. So he had just five individuals and say, okay, let them reproduce. You know, they are rats, so and so on. And, and then I will be rich. Nice. Okay. But nobody knows exactly what happened. It didn't work exactly, and they were just escaping and spreading around. And this is a biological invasion from a very small initial condition, and they're spreading around, and now they are present in almost all Europe. Millions of individuals, they were very successful in invading the European continent. So, but you know, due to our, uh, due to the people in uh, near Prague, I mean, this in that time was probably Austro-Hungarian Empire. They know the range where you could find the muskrat over years. So at year uh, 1905. It was in, in, in the initial point, but they have maps where you can find the muskrat. Okay, so you go for 1909. That's the region where you could find the muskrat. 1913, this region. 1917, this region. Okay, so it's expanding, expanding. Yeah. Is it expanding with constant speed or not? Well, more or less. Let's see the question. So how could I address this question? So it, you know, this space is not homogeneous. Therefore, it's not just a, 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 a circular region. It's kind of like that. But you know, if you look at, at, the, at the plots here, for instance, this one, you could find a fit, fit a circle to this. What's the best fit of a circle to this region? Okay? We'll have a radius. Okay? There will be a certain radius. Well, and, and for the all other cases also, yeah, you fit a circle here, has a radius. And then what I want to do is I want to do a plot in time of the radius. Right? I will have some points. And if this is a line, straight line, then it means that the derivative of r with respect to t is constant. And this is the invasion speed is constant. If it's not a straight line, it's not constant. 
Okay? Okay? So that's what Scallon did with this data, okay? much later. So he analyzed this data in this, uh, in this situation, and he was looking for how the radius of the region where you can find the muskrat expanded in time. So what he obtained is, oh, okay, there was still one more, uh, 1921 also, and he obtained it exactly a line. Okay. Exactly a line. Straight line. Constant speed. Scanlon is right. Constant speed invasion. Okay. You see the time scale? Years. From 1905 to 1920 something. 21. Okay. So that mm, almost 20 years. Okay. To see this expansion. Okay. So he's not analyzing where you can find the muskrat on the scale of months. Yet find nothing interesting. It's it's the good scale is this one, which is the scale which corresponds also to the to the to the demographic scale of of uh, created through the birth process. Okay? So fabulous! You have constant speed invasion, and this is. Uh, what you expect from the fischer kolmogorov equation. Now you say, I want more. I want to calculate the speed. Calculation of the speed. So, in order to know the speed, you have to know the growth rate and the diffusion constant, because the speed is the square root of that Diffusion constant time times times the growth rate, but the growth rate is easy to know. I mean, can I even get this from the lab or observation in the field? But how do I get the diffusion constant? How do I measure the diffusion diffusion constant? Well, then you have to go back to more statistical physics or what uh, what was known uh, in the uh, hundred years ago as the kinetic theory of gases. And uh, you can show that the, the diffusion constant, which appears in the diffusion equation, is related to the, uh, the, the square of, uh, mean uh, root of the distance traveled by individuals. So you think you have movement is like that. In each uh, of those corresponds to a certain fixed amount of time. So you have movements which are uh, larger and smaller, and from this you can calculate the um, the value of g from. I'm I'm not writing the formal expression, but you can do this. But uh, many times this doesn't work. It doesn't work. So let's go and see why. Because what would you do? You'd say, I want to do this. Okay? So this is on a on a very short time scale, okay? It's a short time scale. And on a short time scale, you have this kind of erratic movement, but for many, many species, they have home ranges, because they have a home, okay? They have a place where they come back at the end of the day. So. You can study the movement on uh, on the scales of days, of, uh, of hours, but if you want to scale up for, say, years, then you have a problem, because at the end of every day, the individual came back to a certain place. Therefore, there is a home range, because the guy is here, he's on, 
cannot go infinity. Can, there's a certain distance he can go from his home and come back. Okay? Which is, this has not been included in the diffusion equation. No. Yeah? This is not in the diffusion. Diffusion was just random movement, no home ranges. Okay? You can obviously do home range analysis with this. It's, it's, it's a more contemporary uh, uh, research, recent. But, so, let's take an example. If, if you have, uh, say, ants, okay? you follow the individuals, and then you say, okay, first of all, they, they are all in a line usually, okay, <laughs> the ants. Uh, so where's the randomness and so on? But at the end of the gate, they go back to the, the how you said it's a colony, yeah, for Miguel. And uh, so if you now ask the question, where do I find a certain species of ants? It is not related to the daily movement of the, of the individuals. It's actually the expansion of new colonies. Okay, so then you have to model some very different uh, system, which is the system which describes the, the, the expansion of colonies, which is a rare events, but these events drive the expansion. And if in this it can be modeled very well by, by random movement, the expansion of a new, uh, of new, um, a new colony formed by usually by juveniles or depends on the species we are talking about. So this is the movement that characterizes the thing. So the diffusion process associated, if you try to calculate from the daily movement, the diffusion constant, you will be orders of magnitude too high. Because it's rare events associated to the creation of new homes in general, okay? Which is the driver of the invasion. If you're, which means that the diffusion takes uh, takes uh, 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 is, is happening on a much smaller time, uh, much longer time scale, which means much smaller diffusion constant. Right? So that's tricky, that what you, if you, you have a definite question, you have to know what's the real process which is driving your, 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 your system. So if, mm, if you have like, uh, like uh, animals or that have home ranges, you have to take care, you cannot just consider them without uh, just a simple diffusion. Simple diffusion will work for bacteria or whatever. So uh, there, there's a story about the hantavirus, in, uh, which is uh, a new species of hantavirus has been discovered at the beginning of the century. Uh, and it's actually a uh, pathogenic uh, uh, virus it gives you a respiratory syndrome, which is fatal in 60% of the cases. Very high number. And uh, it comes to a host, which is uh, uh, this uh, little rat. And where you find the rat, you find the virus. So the expansion of the disease goes with the rat. And, uh, okay, very good. So you can track the rat. So we are interested in knowing where can I find the rat, okay? Uh, so, the diffusion of the host, of the rat, is actually well modeled by the, these usual models, but the D is not connected to the daily movement. So I know a guy that actually is a physicist from New Mexico, who was, uh, was working on this together with uh, with Argentinian collaborators from, from Maridoche. And um, so they had an equation for the, not so simple, but an equation for this, for the invasion of the, the home, uh, where, where you expect to find 
the the um, the disease and uh, so in order to make prediction they need they really needed the, the the value of the diffusion constant yeah so they went to the biology lab uh, next door and convinced the people that uh, why we don't try to just follow the rat you make a have a certain region, you follow the, daily, the movement of the rat. So they went there and calculated D. And the speed was such that the United States would be invaded in a month, <laughs> which was clearly wrong. Okay? Clearly wrong. And that comes from the fact that the high rat has home ranges, and the, the expansion of the range where you find the, uh, the, 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 the animal is driven by, by juveniles that create new, new homes. Okay? That's that's the very diff different, okay? Than just the daily movement. Okay? You you know well there are many things that uh, in in order to have realistic things. Uh, first is uh, you you know you have to know what's your what's the process that drives you or your question. I mean, if your question is daily movement and all of this was okay, if it's a uh, home range, uh, an expansion of the population, the invasion of a population at a certain time, you have, you have to know the biology of your of your individuals. So if they have wrong home ranges, then well, then you, on, on a larger time scale, you just cannot, can go, you can't go on with simple diffusion all the time because they are, me the, you know the process. Uh, okay, the, the the range where I find the population it's, it's driven driven by new homes and so on, and I can model the, this process and not the daily movement. Okay. The second thing is all of this has been uh, done with a homogeneous space. Okay, homogeneous space means D is a constant that does not depend on where in the I am. Okay, so but. For instance, the, this hunter virus story, this, this, this rat is from the, the semi-arid uh, region, like uh, Arizona and New Mexico and so on. And uh, uh, so it needs this kind of, this kind of uh, region. Uh, and the diffusion constant is one in, in this desertic area, but it will be something very different in other areas. So you also need to know the, how, non, how the non-homogeneous uh, characteristics of space with respect to movement uh, are. And so you have to know how your species reacts to different habitats, different kind of, uh, of climate, and all of this creates different uh, uh, diffusion constants, diff uh, different uh, um, uh, growth factors, all of this can depend strongly on that. Okay, so for, for really doing uh, something which will connect with reality, is you need more more information. Uh, but it's true that if you can make things like, okay, you can take, uh, for instance, at the level of uh, of landscapes, you can take um, can images of a landscape. Say you have a fragmented landscape, you have a species that you know how uh, that behaves in, in, in two, maybe two different ways. One in the, uh, which is uh, when it's in, in the habitat, and a different uh, movement when it's on the matrix, which is the, the, usually the, 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 the part which is not the real habitat. And you can go on and write a two-dimensional uh, nonlinear partial differential equation for this process and integrate numerically and see what happens. That, that's possible to do. Okay? So you can do this and people do this. Okay? So it's only not amenable to, to a mathematical analysis right in the, uh, like this. Okay? We have everything is numerical in this case. Yeah. Yeah, there there are. So you can introduce the idea that uh, you have a, a distribution kernel. Okay? 
So the solution column gives you the probability that uh, given that I'm at point X, what's the probability that next time that I will be at a certain point uh, uh, Y, uh, which is a certain distance from the f first point, okay? So uh, the diffusion process, uh, this, this probability is given by a Gaussian. It decays with the, the, the length, okay? But it could be different, and people have done uh, a lot of work on this. Uh, uh, you can measure this um, redistribution kernels for many species. Many of them are not Gaussian, not well approximated by Gaussians, or other distributions. And there is a formulation, it's uh, the work essentially of a guy called Mark uh, Cott. Cott and uh, no, not Mark, Mark Lewis. that have introduced a formalism that, uh, that is not based only on the, on the Gaussian diffusion process. It can be general diffusion processes. You can have uh, processes which are connected to, to, uh, to, to movements which have uh, uh, distribution, a probability of, of, of moving, uh, which uh, decays uh, slowly, for instance. So, Okay, so let me give this final example. It's a curiosity, but uh, it's nice. So if uh, you can have movements that are like that. Okay, so the steps here, like all, all of them are of comparable size. Okay, most of the steps are in a certain range, but there are some steps that are long, much longer. So if you look for the probability distribution given the size of the step, okay, this is not a, a exponentially decaying anymore. So the size of the step will be have a distribution, but it decays, but can decay as a polynomial, not as maybe not as a, a, an exponential. Okay, if this means that it does not decay so fast, means that these events here, which are large steps, are not so rare. If, if it goes like a Gaussian, you will never see this because it can calculate, say, that the, the probability of seeing this during, uh, you will see one in every 10 million of years. So it's actually, you will never see this. And, uh, but sometimes when you have a, decay which is not exponential, you can have rare events of this kind. These are called the Levy flags. So, and then the, uh, the curious story about Levy flights is that there was a bunch of people working on Levy flights, really bunches of people. And this comes from a, from a paper published in Nature, uh, with participation also of Brazilian person, but uh, you're, it's a group connected to, um, uh, the name is not coming to me, a guy, physics department in New York. And uh, so they consider a particular system, which is albatrosses, okay, flying around. And then they had the, the flight distance of the albatrosses. And they looked at it, it gave you a polynomial decay. Therefore, the, the way of they look for food probably would be something like this, this, this. They are moving around here, then go to the other place, and then go to the other place, and then the other places. So this motivated Lots of works for all kinds of species to know how the species moves. Okay? But like 10 years later, an ecologist which uh, worked with albatrosses looked at this and said, no, albatrosses don't do this. Just not true. <laughs> There's something wrong with this. Okay? So the, uh, well, he contacted actually the people from from the first paper, 
put out there's something just not not correct in your analysis. So they went for the so what what did the first group I mean the first paper do? They just took uh, 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 the data from a paper, okay? so they don't have access to the raw data. But then while well, they could find a way to the, to the raw data, and how was the data collected? So this is the, before the time of GPS uh, everywhere. So there was a sensor at the Albatross. And so the sensor is a sensor that marks the time uh, of uh, when the, the, when you, it fills the, 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 uh, the water. So the Albatross flies, then goes on and woof, catches a fish. Then you get the wet sensor, and this marks it, uh, the moment where the, you have a wet sensor. That's the, and then it whoop, goes up, and flies, uh, then up again, and wet sensor. And then if you think more or less that the flight, that the speed of flight should more or less be constant or limited to a certain small range, then the time between the, the sensor marks will be proportional to the distance traveled. Okay, good. So they took took a uh, they they took a uh, they, they, uh, they looked at the at the data, and actually there were big differences of time between uh, two marks connected to oh here's my fish, okay. So, but an assumption which was taken is that the only thing that the albatross does is fly and fish. But it does other things, yes? What does it do? What, what else? Hmm? Hmm? It's rest. Okay? It has to rest. Therefore, actually what was going on that these are not long jumps. It's just that the albatross took a rest. Five hours. And then he went back to his, uh, his work, his job. Okay. And then if you go from the date and say no, and, and this was always the same time of the day, more or less, okay? So this should be related, I mean, the people that know albatrosses know that probably it takes rest, I don't know, in the morning or in the evening or whatever, okay? Or I don't know, albatrosses do sleep or, uh, okay, so from the biology, they, they found the, the, the following that, well, they could kind of expurgate, uh, let's take out the events which are connected to precisely to to when you expect the the the, the albatross to be uh, uh, at rest then you get a new distribution and there's no levy flight it's pure diffusion and what did they do published a second paper in nature saying this <laughs> that's a way to like two papers they published two papers in nature one correct uh, one first one 10 years later and the second one saying the first one was wrong okay they didn't say wrong it's a reanalysis and well um, comparing models and whatever that means it was wrong actually <laughs> yeah and uh, that's a good way to improve your 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 curriculum yeah I mean, two, two papers in nature now, I know these guys actually because there are people from Paraná involved and people from uh, uh, Rio Grande do Norte and so on, the Brazilian guy, but with the um, with the uh, with, with connected to this guy from this is people from statistical mechanics. It's very important physicists in New York and statistical mechanics. I, I can't remember the name now, but um, so that's it for today. That's, uh, you see, it was more mathematical, but well, it's also fun. Uh, they have partial differential equations and so on, and that's it. So I hope you have a very productive afternoon. Uh, today is the big day. I mean, you, you better have your models and you better solve equations or something has to happen today, yeah? yeah? Something has to come out, yeah? Because you still have tomorrow. The idea is that tomorrow you organize your presentation, yeah, and um, prepare the slides and so on. But experience 
over the last 12 years shows that it's never the case, that people are still doing their calculations on, on, on Saturday. And there has been cases where the preparation of the slides was only after 10 o'clock in the evening on Saturday. But I, we don't expect this to happen. It was an exceptional case. It was a Libby flight. And, uh, but ideally, you should come to a conclusion today and, uh, and uh, discuss the slides and maybe the biological insights that you get tomorrow. But well, it could happen that maybe you take tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon to continue your work because you are excited about getting new results, but it's normal also. Okay? So, okay, good work, good afternoon. Today we don't have evening session. Huh? Thank you.